Today I'm going to show you how to get the Copley step net set up for EtherCAT. Uh, we're going to use an EtherCAT master and the Ether, EtherCAT cable goes, it's just an Ethernet cable, connects to the input. Um, I've got a flash, fast blinking light because of my uh, STO. I have to bypass the safety so I'm going to use the STO jumper. Um, this will put the drive into a disabled mode. Uh, waiting for the EtherCAT master to come along and enable it. Um, there is a switch here for uh, node addressing, two switches. So the switch two is the lower order number. I've got it switched to position four right now. Um, we're going to use the uh, serial to USB adapter so that we can connect CME2 to monitor what's going on while the EtherCAT master is. Uh, running and sending messages, so this will allow us to run the scope trace and do analysis to see what's going on. I've got a 24 volt power supply. This motor would probably run a lot faster if I had used a 75 volt power supply, but I got 24 volts on hand. This is an unusual stepping motor. It's got six wires, so we'll have to see how to wire that up. Normally we get the four wire motor in series or parallel, uh, but we'll see how to how to wire a six wire motor. On the back here, I have a US digital encoder, single ended to a differential adapter, and then a cable, which I've got wired to the feedback. So this does have an incremental encoder 4000 line. I got the motor power connected. We should hook up earth to the frame of the device. That's standard. And I got the motor four wires hooked up, and I left the center taps open so that we can uh, get the most current into this motor. That's not the highest speed, but uh, which should be sufficient to do 60 RPM today with no problem. So we're going to take a look at what I got here. This is the uh, six wire motor. Uh, there's a center winding on that. We could have connected B to the center and left this coil open. That would have reduced the current and increased the speed of the motor. Um, normally, you know, if we have an eight wire motor, uh, it's either series or par parallel winding. Uh, series winding requires more voltage, parallel winding requires more current. I like the parallel winding for more current, uh, that way it uses less voltage to hit higher speeds. Um, on the TEL, of course, we connected the motor, motor power wires, uh, but this device has an incremental encoder, um, so we hooked up plus 5 and ground, A, A naught, B, B naught, and X, X naught, which is index. Uh, the encoder mounted to the back of the stepping motor. Um, this is a single-ended uh, HP type of device that reads the lines. Uh, this has a 1,000 line or 4,000 counts, but there's options to go up to 10,000 counts per rev. 1,000 um, line, 4,000 count is kind of a minimum, uh, but you can see the, uh, the dimensions here of the encoder. Um, I also got this little adapter here which uh, hooks up to the single-ended and gives me a, so the pins of the single-ended go in here, and there's a connector for differential. Uh, so this mounts right onto the back of my encoder and gives me differential transmission. And this cable option here uh, allows us to uh, have you know, a connection to that connector and then uh, wires that I can wire up to the drive. So without further ado, let's see how to, set this thing up. The uh, basic setup, normally on, on the initial configuration, we can configure what we have. Um, not going to run in servo mode or do encoder corrections, just purely stepping motor, open loop, check the encoder to make sure you haven't lost position. That's like 80% of all applications. Uh, position mode, EtherCAT, uh, COE for the source of command. And then we can buffer the incremental encoder out if you want. That's fine. Um, entered some data on the motor. I got 4,000 micro steps per rev setting because I have a 4,000 uh, count per rev encoder. I like to keep those two numbers the same. You could increase it, but might as well just go with the encoder resolution. This is a one amp motor. I measured the inductance and resistance. It's 200 full steps per rev, so you get lots of micro steps per rev. Uh, I calculated the initial tuning values and came up with some currents here. Uh, the bandwidth check was a little low, so I had to auto-tune it. Um, 
actually the first thing we did here was enable it and rotate the current vector uh, to make sure we got the right forward direction. So um, this is, you know, first time you get a motor, you got to rotate it. You can see the motor shaft rotating in a clockwise direction. I like that to be forward. And you can see as it's going forward, the counts are going up. If you don't know your encoder, you can rotate the shaft in the motor one time, which is 50 electrical cycles. And you can confirm that you have 4,000 counts per rev. If you don't like the motor direction, you can invert it and then in invert the encoder direction. So when you go forward, counts go up. Um, so all we really did was do a little current loop tuning um, and then went right to uh, the profile tab to do a single turn. I set my trajectory limits to slow 60 RPM. Um, I had used auto setup checkbox, but then I wanted to see some more things like voltage limited. Uh, I could monitor the bus voltage and terminal voltage servo, but let's give this a little move and see how it works. That sounds like a stepping motor, open loop uh, micro stepping. So we're going to do line styles, connect pluses to see the samples. Uh, we should monitor the profile velocity to make sure there's no funny business here. It should be nice and flat. Uh, each sample is 200 and 625 microseconds, so that's a good, uh, perfect profile velocity. That's what we should see from the EtherCAT master. Uh, when we zoom in to the actual current, uh, this assumes that I haven't spun the motor too fast. Uh, I should be able to determine the variation in the actual current. It looks like about 30 milliamps peak to peak or plus or minus uh, 10 or 15 uh, milliamps of quantization noise. That, that's normal for a stepping motor. Um, we got a little time here, so let's see how to configure this thing for the EtherCAT. Uh, normally, we may want to um, jog the motor to check it out after our tuning, but we have to be careful. Uh, when we're disabled in this disabled mode, um, that's not the EtherCAT mode. Unpower up or reset will be in the mode that's saved in flash. So this is stepper can mode. It's EtherCAT. It's COE, and that's why we call it stepper can. But um, if you jog it, notice you're in a position mode, stepper programs. Like you can you can jog this thing back and forth. You know that's pretty cool. But uh, when you're done jogging, you know uncheck the box, and make sure it's still in a in a stepper mode. So disabled mode stepper mode. So when we power up, we're going to be disabled until the EtherCAT master comes in and takes it from pre-operational to operational and then enables the drive and then we can make some moves. Uh, we'll take a quick peek at the, uh, the alias here under network config. We can see switch to is set to four and the, the address is four. This is the alias. So when you bump into a drive on an EtherCAT network, it's minus one, minus two, minus three. So that you can switch over to the alias. This keeps the customers from getting confused about where the drives are located and how we wired it up. So everybody wants to switch, even though we don't really need it. People want it. Um, while we got some time, let's take a look at uh, servo mode just because it's cool. Um, I have to say I've never really used this in a real application because it's, it's a stepping motor, not a servo motor. Um, but let's check it out. So we'll take a look. Uh, things look a little different in a servo mode. It's treating it like a 50 pole brushless motor with a little wake and wiggle. So I'm just going to say, OK, I'm not going to calculate because I already tuned the current loop. I will have to tune the velocity loop here. Um, the phasing is already done because we went uh, forward and saw counts go up. So that's good. Uh, but let's take a look at the uh, function generator tuning the current loop. So that's a pretty awful current loop, but hey, it's a stepping motor, and uh, I tuned this myself earlier. Um, I could adjust it, but let's just leave that alone. I'm very interested in the velocity tuning. Uh, I like to look at channel 3, current actual, to go along with the auto setup checkbox. Velocity parameters, that's a good XL D cell. I'm not going fast. Bang it back and forth at 5 hertz is fine. 
Uh, let's take a look at that. So that's just a little wiggle in the motor as I'm testing out the velocity mode. Uh, I can see, um, yeah, the current's nice and small. Let's get that out of there because it's kind of kind of noisy looking. So the, the limited is actually what we're commanding. Uh, that comes after, you know, it's a square wave and it goes through an XL B cell limit. Uh, so I have commanded and then actual, and it's a little bit bumpy, but you know, if, if the gains are too high, then we'll you know, break it off, like, cut the gains in half uh, if the gains get too high. There you go, big oscillations. Uh, I cranked up the integral term, that seems to be fine. Um, Let's take a look at doing a profile mode in a move in servo mode. Auto set up checkbox. Let's go 4,000 RPM, current, actual current, voltage, bus voltage. I got a 24 volt power supply. Let's look at voltage, terminal voltage stepper. No, servo. We're in a servo mode. And voltage limited warning. So event status warning, voltage limited. I'll make a, a little move here. So I think I want to go much faster than that. Boy, that current sure is noisy looking. Let's just turn that off there. Um, that's fine. It's plus or minus a uh, couple hundred milliamps, and we're only using a small current. See, this is this is why servo mode is more efficient. It only uses what it needs for current. Uh, but let's take a look at going a lot faster. Uh, I think I can do this in servo mode with no problem. So let's check it out. So here's a servo mode move. Uh, we can see the bus is up around 26 or so. The voltage terminal stepper is rising. We're getting close to 20. Following air is small. Oh, that, that's nice servo stuff. Uh, let's go couple of revs and let's crank up the speed a little bit and try 350. Yeah, see I set the limit to 375 RPM because I knew I couldn't go that fast. So, um, so it seems to do it. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, we're starting to get close to the voltage limit here. Um, so if I try to go a little faster, we're going we're gonna to start seeing voltage limit warning. You know, that's not bad for a uh, 24 volt supply with a stepping motor. If we had 75 volts, uh, we could really crank it up. Uh, well, let's see, 370. Let's see. Yeah, there's that warning again. So eventually I'll go, yeah, so we're getting near the limit. The voltage limit warning momentary is fine. It's just, if you start pulling some current, you're going to get some IR drop. It's like five ohm motor. So one amp, that's five volts. So we will definitely be voltage limited and our following error will shoot to the roof and it'll shut down with a following error fault. And uh, these things are configured. There's the, uh, the fault at a one rev uh, tracking window, a thousand counts. So move and settle, maybe a hundred, hundred counts is a better number there. Okay, well that's that's it for this. I'm gonna put it back into um, open loop stepping motor because it's a stepping motor. Works really good as a stepping motor. Doesn't work very good as a servo motor, but we could do it if you had to. So I'll just leave this alone, say okay. And check my configuration. On power up or reset, it'll come up in a stepper mode. So I'm ready for the EtherCAT master to start sending commands. So this is my uh, addendum to the StepNet EtherCAT to show us where the uh, EtherCAT guides are. So there's a really good note here under support, EtherCAT synchronization. Uh, this talks about the distributed clocks generation of the sync zero pulse. There's a good section on debugging. We can actually configure the drive's output to pulse when the sync message is sent, assuming we have a high speed output on the drive. This is the configuration of the serial interface using the ASCII command tool from CME2. Um, so that's good debugging. 
and configuration and uh, configuring of the sync manager. I like this one here, 1C32, one sub index 1, set to 2. And uh, this, get, you know, you send the uh, position command and it holds it until you get the sync 0 pulse. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not even going to read how to run without a synchronization because that, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, there's another document under downloads and communication protocols, the Can Open Programmer's Guide. And this has this, the similar features to the DS402. This came obviously from Can Open, but it's the DS402 protocol. And we've added a bunch of things in here that have to do with um, uh, EtherCAT 2, like CSP mode. Um, and uh, you know all all the objects are are noted here. So I just wanted to point out that when you're using a step net uh, in open loop micro stepping, you may send your position command every millisecond or whatever. Um, but we like to do interpolation because we close the position loop every 250 microseconds. So you need to set the uh, you know set the time that you're going to send your update. In, in the sub index one, and you know, it's like one times 10 to the minus three is one millisecond. So you got to set the sub index one and two in order to uh, get the drive to do the interpolation properly when doing open loop micro stepping. Um, there's also an EtherCAT user guide, which I haven't found the link to yet. I just found the PDF here. Um, this guide talks about. The various drives and and you know how how everything works. Um, there's a substantial amount of information in here, which uh, I'm just flipping through really fast. But um, you know, flats and slots for single or two axes drives. Is it flat offset by hex 800 or is it slots? Uh, that's a, a format for the DS402. A good section on the clocks, and there should be some notes in here about using fixed PDOs. Yeah, our ESI file has fixed PDOs. We prefer that these are used because they're updated quickly and processed on a higher priority in the drive. So the ESI file will specify which ones are fixed PDOs. And, um, you know, it just goes on and on and shows us how to use various, uh, like the Beckoff and uh, there should be a section on the contest, but I'm not seeing it here. Uh, so, anyways, that's the EtherCAT user guide. Um, to get to find the latest uh, ESI files and firmware, we go to the the beta section and accept, and we can see the uh, latest ESI files and the latest firmware. So, if you had a a TE2 or a TEL, you can download the latest firmware. And the EtherCAT ESI files are zipped up here. Okay, so I've got my latest ESI files here. I unzipped it. There's my, my TE2. So we can go file, open. Uh, on the desktop. Jeez, sorry for the slow here. All right, well, let's look at the TEL. So, this is an ESI file format. Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, parameters like the data structure. Um, so, we should be able to find all the objects in here. Fixed PDOs, uh, transmit and receive PDOs. Anyways, this may, this might not be the best tool to use to check it out, but um, here it is. That's the ESI file. So earlier in this video, we were showing off uh, perfect profile velocity. Um, this one is not perfect. The profile velocity has a little blip in it, sounded like a knock on the motor. Um, the other, so that was just a, a timing problem <clears throat> using uh, getting the synchronization right. And um, 
you can see the commanded current in green is a flat line. That's perfect. But <clears throat> the interpolation was not turned on. And even though we're commanding two amps, we're getting like plus, you know, 100 milliamps and minus 200 milliamps. So this was to do with the interpolation of micro stepping. So every update rate of one millisecond, we got a large pulse of current. This made an awful noise in the motor. It's not a normal stepping motor noise. So um, these are just some things to look out for. And, uh, you know, to get the EtherCat Master up and running, you know, we, we all got to work together. Okay, well, thanks for your time.